Well, here's our little Kestrel Falcon, the one that we've uh, had for the more than a year now because its wing was damaged and the feathers weren't growing and staying in properly. And we've had it in a specially designed soft uh, vinyl, clear vinyl uh, cage basically with ventilation at the top in the hopes that, um, that if by any chance that it's in a very soft, smooth, almost like a padded room facility that, uh, the, that the feathers would grow back and that we would be fine. And as you see, the feathers are all there now. And he's flying, oh, there he goes. Okay. And as you can see, he's flying wonderfully now. And, uh, oop. Which basically means it's so very exciting after, oh, a year and a half, this little Kestrel Falcon is going to be returned to the wild. And so we're very excited about all of that. And hopefully he'll be uh, going back to the wild very, very shortly. There's my little guy. You are so cute. So as you can see, he's very quick and, and doing absolutely wonderfully. So great news. The little Kestrel that we've had for a year and a half is uh, now very close to ready for release. If any pictures that you get, should I just send them to your Facebook group? Or? That'd be awesome. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, I got, so, I got a, yeah, some like good ones at the release. That'd be so. awesome. Thank you. Okay. As you see, I didn't even use a glove for this one. Uh, obvious, this is the Castro Falcon. This is the smallest falcon found in North America. Some people would call it a sparrow hawk. Why don't you move back a little bit so people okay. get pictures? There you go. Uh, some people call it a, a sparrow hawk, but it's not a hawk. It is a true falcon. And let me tell you how you tell the difference. First of all, all falcons have black eyes. They've got those beautiful black eyes. Now, hawks will have brown eyes, red eyes, orange eyes, blue eyes, gray eyes, yellow eyes. All hawks, all falcons have black eyes. All falcons have a stripe that comes down below the eye, and you can see its mustache right there. That's stripe. That's uh, indicative of all falcons have a stripe. All falcons have Sorry. pointed <laughs> wings. Well, the owl had those big, beautiful round wings. The falcon's wings, as you can see, go to a point. They're pointy wings. And all falcons have that. All falcons actually have um, much, much smaller, even though those are little pinpricks, and those, those can kind of re-grip really onto you, and it feels like little, neat, little tiny needles, kind of almost like acu acupuncture needles, but they can't really hurt you. Does that make sense? And so, you, you know, I can peel them off. There's no big deal. Now, this particular guy is, is, a, is a wonderful success story in that this bird came to me uh, a year and a half ago. And when it came in a year and a half ago, um, the, all of the feathers on, on one wing were gone. And the reason they were gone is the little bird, it was, it was like January, and the bird got frostbite on its wingtip. And so the feathers were not growing back. And, and so we kept it in, in all, for a year, hoping that it would grow new feathers, and every time it would grow new feathers, new feathers would, come, would fall out, and there wasn't enough tissue to hold it back into place. And so we basically decided we're going to take this little kestrel, and we're going to make application to the federal government instead of releasing it or killing it, because that's our only alternatives, to, have, to put this Kestrel on an educational permit. So we use this for our school programs. And um, so I brought the Kestrel into the house. We started to tame it down a little bit. And I made a very, very special, and I hate to use the word cage, but a very special, it's about three foot square, and, the, and all of the sides are clear vinyl very very soft very very smooth and in the clear vinyl uh, cage for six months it was smooth enough and soft enough that the bird was able to grow its feathers back in and with enough feathers grow back in the feathers support feathers does that make sense and it was able to regain all of its feather so that it so that it can fly it's been out in the flight chamber now for a couple of weeks uh, exercising like mad this is a full adult and he's definitely ready to go back to the wild and so with this little guy, they do like to bite. <laughs> yes, you do. You like to bite, you little snot. Falcons do like to bite. And, and so um, you're my volunteer? Yes. Will he make it to the oh, edge without... Right there. <laughs> just, you just hold him just in one hand, just like that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go take him over. Let's go race this little thing. <laughs> Uh, that's
that's the wrong name. It's a Kestrel Falcon. Sparrowhawk. If some calls it a Sparrowhawk, they don't know what they're talking about. It's a, no, it's just a Falcon. No, it's a Falcon. Yeah. It has long, slender wings. It has long toes. It has black eyes. Don't Falcon. Is it just the Falcon Falcon or does the other Falcon dive? Just, just go ahead and throw him up and let him go back to the water where he belongs. Oh, nice to see him fly. Oh, wow. Oh, he's he's fine. He, he has a much, harder, a much harder time to win. He's so small. Martin, I think he's going back to Enoch. <laughs> you know, we, I figured Tom, I gotta get home. he was flying so well that he was going to release himself and get out in our yeah. in our yard. Yeah, it, it was hard to even. It was hard to open the so if he's facility. The door tonight. Oh, I don't. I don't think he likes us. He's not coming back to us. Just wherever he wants to be. This is my book. This is called Healer of Angels, and uh, I need to get them ready for for a program because when I when I do my wildlife programs I take copies of my book and we sell them as a fundraiser uh, for our wildlife rescue center and so it helps us raise money to feed the animals so if you ever like uh, animal stories this is 40 years of wildlife rescue stories and the wisdom of grandparents and I my wife and I we autograph each and every one of them but what's even more important than me autographing the books is that um, you get my eagle's autograph as well. This is, here, this is a rubber stamp of my eagle. His name is Scout. This is his footprint. And what we did is we took the, uh, put a little food cutter, cutter on the bottom of his foot, let him walk around on a, on a big piece of paper, chose the very, very best footprint from that, and we had a rubber stamp made of it. We stamp each and every book with Scout's footprint when you buy them directly through our Wildlife Rescue Center. And so that's... What it looks like, that is, that's Scout's footprint. And then I autograph the book and my wife autographs the book. If you, if you buy the book directly through our Wildlife Rescue Center website, um, all of the profits from the sale of the book go to or help feed sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife. And, and that's the only way that you get the autographed copy. So, so that's kind of an incentive for people to, uh, to help us and, and buy the book. And, you know, and there's a lot of fun stories in the book. There's, there's stories in the book about the first elephant I trained. There's stories in the book about um, working with big cats. There's stories in the book about vulture vomit. And, and so it's, it's really, it's, it's a very fun read and for the family. And, and the prophets, like I said, really help us feed the sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife that we care for. As always, uh, every little bit of support helps. So please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, to our uh, YouTube channel and uh, help spread the word about the Southwest Wildlife Foundation and, and the good work that we do here.